all right here for the weekend pod with Daniel. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Yeah, United won, so we don't have to talk about a bunch of dickheads losing a game for once. Seems like a rarity these days, but uh, yeah, all good. Although winter has come here, it's cold and wet. It's very sad because it will be like that until next June or July. <laughs> oh, my days. Yeah. It was actually quite sunny in London today, although it isn't now. But it, it did soar. As soon as kids went back to school, it immediately got cold. And my wife yeah. decided she had to put the heat. We already had that today. We've already had our first ruckus about the heating for the winter. <laughs> but I just, like, I can't. Like, I'll, I'll wear, like, a million layers to avoid giving my money away to utility warehouse. It's yeah. The house is, like, feel <laughs> like it looks. Every time, like, just, you see that word. Well, like, the, there you go. You can give your money away to that if you want. Uh, yeah. And, um... Yeah, we're 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 we're, 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 already fall, we're already falling out about that. And it's just like so. It's funny, like when she's when she's in, it's like how long can I leave it off or turn it off without her noticing, and then like stick it back up again to keep it warm. And so, and when I know she's coming back from work, how long realistically do I need to put the heating on before she gets home so that it will feel like it's not been off all day? These important things uh we have solar on our roof so i haven't had an electricity bill for a few months but it'll start ticking up shortly uh, it m- more like when the clocks go back oh no no it's not the clocks it's more like october november when uh it starts dying off the solar production but yes yeah, uh, sad days uh, all right solar panels on your roof solar panels on my roof yeah okay you man uh, did you fit the loose? yeah and yeah yeah it's- is this an environmental thing? Well, sort of. And then we, we had to do the roof anyway because it was like 40 years old and needed it. And then you get a massive tax break. So, uh, I, I mean, it's quite expensive doing it, but it was going to be expensive anyway because people, you know, you know, crew up on our roof for a couple of days. And and uh, so we worked out with the tax break uh, and the fact that you can finance it at 0%. I don't know how this works out, but it does. Um, that it, it kind of made sense, you know. Suddenly, a check for twenty thousand dollars turns up in, you know, from the federal government. You're like, oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, the, the economics are a bit odd, but I think there's basically a lot, a lot of subsidies that make it worthwhile. Uh, and then you can sell your electricity back to the grid at the same price that you buy it. So it all works out all right. Just about. Uh, all right, should we talk about football? United won. Daniel, what? What is going on here? Uh, United won, and quite comfortably, uh, I think. Although, very, two very different halves, weren't they? It was like, first half, a little bit chaos ball, end-to-end, a lot of chances created. Second half, actually had some control, and that was, the, I think, the most surprising bit, that uh, barely looked like United weren't going to win. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'd split it rather probably into thirds. First half, or even into two unequal parts the first half an hour and then the rest the first half hour was the same shite that we're used to and if we're being kind i guess we could say international break taking the players a bit of time to get back up to speed feels banal to say that the penalty save was the turning point but the penalty save was the turning point and for a keeper that doesn't save shots it was a good save yeah actually um otherwise i think yeah, well, what you say about the control is important in that what we've got now is we've got quite a few players who are really intelligent and really good in small spaces. I'm not, um, I mean, even the goalkeeper, in a sense, but then you've got Mesraoui, Mainu, uh, Zerzi, and um, who, who, I think there's one more as well. Um, I've forgotten who it is now. Ericsson was in that team as well. Just, uh, and Ahmad, who are really deft and intelligent. And that then means that we can play in a slightly different way because we've been saying this all along. But on the one hand, you're like, fucking despise these dickheads. And on the other hand, what is this football that manages the clown? And on the other hand, you look at the 11 that's got on the park and how on earth can you play modern football with this bunch of donkeys? And seeing a defence without um, Lindelof or Maguire in it or without, and without one Bissaka is, makes a massive difference. We are yeah. looking not bad at the back now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I, th- I think you're right about the amount of technical plays in the side Do- does allow you to, should allow you to play more possession-based football. And funny thing is, Ahmed's now a fixture in the side and he just, he doesn't feel like a Ten Hag style player. Ten Hag tends to not like those players, you know, in wide areas. He wants fast, direct, uh, play the ball quickly to them. Although a lot of United's, well, the, t- the attack was unbalanced. It was more right than left. Um, but I agree with what you. What thing that is to say? I know, I know. It's been yeah. That's not been the the case for so long. Uh, we we just looked better in in possession in tight spaces. the The team was still stretched out for, as you say, like the first half an hour or so, and it just feels a lot better when people are closer together. I do think, and especially in the second half, Xerxes seemed to get into the game and. I like him in small spaces. He is technical. He holds the ball really well. He brings plays into it. He, I'm not sure he looks like a goal scorer. He looks like an anti-goal scorer at the moment. Um, but but let's let him warm up, you know. And yeah, the- like I, I know what you mean, but I'd be more concerned if he wasn't getting the opportunities because in the last two games, you know, there were two, yesterday there were two or three more. How on earth have you not scored from their chances? But I want that because I know that he's not going to keep missing tap-ins from three yards on the slide that the next time that happens he'll score and the, my concern with him was more that is he going to get himself into goal scoring positions if he's dropping off and isn't electrifyingly quick is he going to get to the box in time and I think we've seen that he is do you know what what I was thinking watching him yesterday is that I never thought that I would compare any player to the player I'm about to compare Xerxes to the player I think he reminds me of and that player is Canu. And, okay. the reason, and the reason why I say that is because uh, fighters talk about getting someone's timing. And the thing that was awkward about Canu, and I think is also awkward to play against about Xerxes, is the timing is just totally different to anyone else. He almost like plays on the offbeat. So the ball arrives at a time when defenders don't expect it to. And I think it'll take his teammates a little bit to get used to that. And it's almost... They just have to do the right thing and assume that he will find them because a lot of the time he will. Mm-hmm. But like Canu, it's it's that th- but it's just that ability to do things a uh, strange and unique pace that just oh I wasn't expecting him to touch the ball there like that. And it was the same. I watched the highlights of him playing for Holland the other day, and the touches, the imagination, particularly were beautiful. And mm-hmm. I was thinking. I don't feel like our dunces are going to be able to cope with the way that he likes to play, but we're not quite a team of dunces anymore. And no, and I guess the concern with him is uh, is he, is him are uh, him and Bruno going to get in each other's zone? I mean, because they are, in a sense, very similar players in in the kinds of spaces they want to play in. But I didn't feel like that was the case, and. You're right, he does get into forward positions quickly enough. I mean, he's got a kind of Harry Kane quality about him in that sense, hasn't he? Uh, like clear. Eric also, not quick, but quick enough. Yeah, quick quick enough, quick enough. yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Hoyland's obviously a, a completely different profile of player. We were told he would be back after the international break. He wasn't, uh, but I presume it's soon. Let's hope it's soon. Anyway, and... Uh, arrow, arrow soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> To use the correct notation. Yeah, exactly. We, we, uh, we live in an emoji world, don't we? But it'd be interesting to see whether they could both play together. I mean, he's certainly Xerxes, a player who could play off a wider area. I mean, he's perfectly comfortable doing that. It's, it's not exactly how Ten Hag tends to want to play, as I said. But um, but he does like this kind of striker that Xerxes is, I think, more really than the kind of striker that Hoyland is. and. As we keep saying, Hazard is a much better fit for the wide players that we have. Um, but it's nice to have both, I think. And I said when we signed Zerxi that if he was good, bearing in mind the type of player he was, I wouldn't be surprised if he nabbed Hoyland's starting space. And I mm. guess at the moment he's the man in possession. And but it is good that we've got that we've got these options uh, for sh- for sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess uh, Lucio wasn't back. Either, but is apparently training, uh, as is um, Tyrell Malassia. Apparently, He's still got a leg, uh, and and that would that would tick the team up a little bit. Not that like Dallow's playing badly. I just think, and in fact, I thought he was all right yesterday. It's just like he's always coming inside. He's always making an extra midfielder. 
uh, and then Ugarte, and then you've got basically the first eleven there, and it'll be quite soon, I think. And and then are we good? I mean, can we get ahead of ourselves after one game and go? Actually, we're not bad against the team that have lost four out of four. Well, that, no, that's true. We cannot. And also, even I talked about the goalkeeper just before. You know that shot in the first half that Dibbling has, and he saves it. Yeah, but look where the ball goes. It's just it's so classic Onana that there was no reason for that ball not to go around the post, but it doesn't. It goes back out into play, and I. Yeah, he got a bit better in the second half of last season, but I think I'd be quite surprised if we're not buying a goalkeeper next summer. And But what I would say still is it feels like we've probably got the lowest density of dense dickheads since Fergie at this point. <laughs> that there's some real enterprise and imagination in the best of their play. And I think, I mean, but they've been like this for a long time. If I was thinking about it, like, it's a bit like my, my school reports, where they're basically like, capable of the very best and the very worst. And often often with it often with they're proximate to each other. Yeah. And although yesterday wasn't the very best, you can see that this should be a decent football team. Let, let's talk about Matthias De Ligt because he was given man of the match and scored United's opening goal. He had a, a pretty terrible, made two really big mistakes against what Bosnia and Germany for the Holland. first one the first one was terrible. The yeah. second one was bad, but Van Dyke. Yeah, it's yeah. just not at the back post. And then has the audacity to dis yeah, yeah. the interview afterwards. I, I, I know. It's very, very Dutch, isn't it? Uh, normally that happens at tournaments where they start you know, shitting on each other right in the mid middle of the tournament. So, uh, after I, midnight. It, it, it was quite... Uh, oh, geez. On Channel 33. <laughs> <laughs> There's one for the people who used to have cable. Uh, oh, dearie me. You put me off my game there, Daniel. Uh Okay, so so he has this, you know, couple of bad performances, makes some mistakes. Van Dyke craps on him, and then Karma truly is a bitch. And then, uh, of course, you know, Forrest do Liverpool yesterday, which was this quite is, so. We're basically we're we're quits with Liverpool over the last two weeks, and yeah. I, ultimately we probably, as Ryan Giggs would say, we would have took that. <laughs> yeah, uh, he scores a nice goal as well. I mean, it's a it's a it's almost off a set, set piece. His second phase off the set piece and. Bruno like curls it in, and there's three players there. I mean, that's the thing with Southampton; they've had a lot of possession this season, but they look very open. I think that was uh, it's. It was a really good header. The way that if you look at like it looks the, on the first viewing, I didn't realise how good it was. But if you watch it in slow motion from the side, from the other angle, his body position when he heads the ball is not yeah. the kind of position from which you would ideally want to steer a header, and he cushions it really nicely. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I only go over the top, like still, like you should probably score from there. But it wasn't an easy header and he tucked it away very nicely. But I think particularly what, what I like about it is he clearly goes forward with the intention of doing something. Yeah. And he, how many times do we watch Rio Ferdinand tramp up there to do absolutely jack shit? And I always thought, like, because when he gets old and Everett starts going instead is in the last season, basically under Fergie, and Everett starts scoring goals, used to be a centre forward. And it's just like, oh, if he'd have been going forward all this time and Rio had been staying back there, then... We would have scored some more goals, and Wolves has just scored against Newcastle. This is turning into not a bad weekend for the famous Man United, actually. For, uh, Ferdinand did score at the cop, so we'll give him that. No, he didn't. Oh, no, it's Old Trafford, wasn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're right, you're right. Anyway, uh, um, uh, other, other players, I mean, I'm just looking at the team. Onto this. Sorry, just onto yeah. this still. Like, I think he got done once, in the, but generally, he, he defends the box well, and... He, he knows what to do, and that is quite important. And we've had centre-backs previously whose physical flaws were so pronounced, and I know De Ligt isn't as quick as we'd like him to be, but he's quicker than Maguire by many, and, and Lindelof, and he's more physical than both of them, mm -hmm. I think, as well. Even though Maguire's a big lad, he's not, I think, De Ligt, I think, is more explosive. So, yeah, I, I don't know if he's going to be a United legend or any of the rest of it, but... He's definitely an improvement. And there's he's, actually some competition for places there as well. He is good enough. Again, Yoro will be back in sort of November time. And we can ease him in with a, a few easy games in the Europa League or something like that. Which is, yeah, now competition for, for places. Lindelof will get binned off. Maybe even in January, depending on Yoro's like, integration into the squads. Uh, I mean, Lindelof's out of contract next summer anyway. Who cares about him? Johnny Evans came on. Yesterday, uh, amazing he's still hanging around, but um, he's uh, good for him. Good for him. Had a few minutes. I mean, of the rest of the team, 
I can't really pull out a bad performance. Um, I think there's a lot of a lot of highlights. I mean, I'm not saying they're all brilliant, but obviously Marcus just it, like some of the stuff he'd been doing in previous games, like even in the Liverpool game, where he just like you look at him going, yeah, there's something about to happen there. I feel, and he he obviously did a lot of personal training, put out the videos and stuff over the international break. He's trying to get confidence. And he just looked a bit more confident, especially the way he took the took the goal as well. I mean that that was the finish of a player that felt confident. Yeah, it was, I mean we 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 know like this is why I find sometimes people that get after him so odd in the sense that we know how good he can be. And it doesn't mean I wouldn't necessarily if we got a big offer up this summer, I probably might well have taken it. But the, the presentation of him as some kind of useless piece of shit is just absurd because we know we know that it isn't true. And we also know if we watch the way that he plays and the way that United play, that over the last two seasons, it hasn't been geared to get the most from him. Now, yesterday was a bit better. He was a bit narrower. But also, it's also to do with him. Like, I remember there was a moment in the Liverpool game where it looks like he's away and he checks to go back inside. Just, no, do just... He's a player that just has to do things quickly as they come to him. And he he was much better at that yesterday. He was much more decisive in possession. Like one of the things we see from him, and I think the major difference between him and Garnacho is that Garnacho, when he gets on the ball, has a plan and he tries to execute it and it either works or it doesn't. Whereas Rashford, you see him, he goes down the left side of the box, he fades inside, he ducks outside, and it does it feels like he's making it up as he goes along. And he very rarely gets anything out of those situations. But when he when he decides what he's going to do and he commits to it, I think that is when, aside from the positional issues and the issues of combinations, depending on who else is with him, but it, it's it's that ability to decide what you're going to do and commit to it. And when he when he's playing his best or when he's contributing, that that's the main difference, I think, between that and when he isn't. I, I mean, I... I... Totally agree with you about playing more narrowly. He's going to get in much better positions. Obviously, Luke Shaw, when and if he is back, helps that a lot because you have someone like on the touchline. Um, I can't wait for that to happen. I think he'll get in much more, in much better positions and get more opportunities to score. The the checking back against Liverpool when he got booed. I, you see, I just don't know about that one because. Of course, we want Rashford to attack, but that's also when he gets all the memes on the internet and that fucking gold bridge bouncing up and down going, oh, look, he's not able to beat his man again. And, you know, the, the kind of campaign that has been launched against him, which, as I understand, he hates and he blames a certain channel for, um, is is like completely unfair and is, is kind of in a situation where he can't win unless he's scoring goals, right? And scoring goals makes a, makes the narrative completely different and obviously gives him a lot of confidence. You, you see him running at players after that and kind of, I think that made a big difference to him. He's like, oh yeah, the work I've put in has paid off. Yeah, like I'm not sure that he'll play in midweek, but I'd be really tempted to start him in midweek because it's an opportunity for him to score again. True. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah he probably won't. Uh, I, I mean, the one player I really hope doesn't play in midweek is Cobby Mining because I just think it looks like there's a, a touch of fatigue going on with him. I, I thought he was fine again. I want him to. I want him to get like 80 passes a game. And um, United don't build up that way, so it's hard for him to do that. But I just want him more involved because he everything is high quality when he is involved. So there's no reason. You look at Angel Gomez in the England game against Finland, 116 passes. No reason why Cobby Mining can't be that player that everything's going through. And maybe I'll get that opportunity uh, when Ugarte's in the side and it's Ugarte doing the covering and tackling. Funny you say that because actually what Gomez did in that England game was not unreminiscent of what I think United want Ugarte to do in true. that yeah, he yeah. was a he lot played... of the time ahead of the ball trying to regain it, but the rest of the time he was sort of the deepest midfield there just try, trying to give it. I mean, he's he's obviously like, like looks looks nicer in possession than Ugarte, but Ugarte can carry the ball. And one thing that I did notice yesterday that was if you look at the red card, it comes just from a really sensible, accurate pass, simple pass out of defence to someone in space. Yeah. Casemiro's cut the bug swatch there and like, smashed it into someone's legs or out miles to the touchline. But obviously it was a ridiculous tackle. But what brought it about was 
the thing that one of the things that Ugarte brings that we don't have, and that's just calm, composed, passing out possession. And what that does, I think, is if you have obviously it's nice to have someone who can hit brilliant passes between the lines from deep. But really, you're not his best players from front of that. So what what you what you don't mind doing is just a simple pass. And then when you get those better players on the ball, they're further forward. Um and I think I think that that is going to be helpful with, with Ugarte, just a simple, simple pass out of defense, and then the better players can do something. And one of the things that I've noticed in the previous games this season, particularly the last two, was that our two the two best players in this team are mainly and Bruno, but our tactics have almost been designed to keep them out of the game. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's, I think it's also a problem with, with Mainu in particular, like he's not quite good enough at getting himself on the ball yet. It'll come, but he's not, he's not quite good enough at that yet. But what's been the case is we've had so many long balls and so many quick transitions that really, and a lot of them are coming from defense to the forwards. Bruno's really struggled to get into the game. He's been hanging about on the touchline and mainly also mooching about. And as you say, like when he when he contributes, when he's on the ball, it's excellent. But there's too much time when he's not on it. And I think that Ugarte is going to help that because where he allows them to get to get on the ball, they'll be more confident that if they lose it, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, uh, Mainu has made more interceptions than any other player in the Premier League this season. Right? It's your number eight should not be the leading interceptor uh, but he has he has that i mean and that's an extra quality he's just a he's a very hard player to pin down on just data because he contributes a lot in everything i just want him on the ball more and uh, and if yeah. ugate allows that to happen or there were signs that united were trying to build up a little more through midfield because we are very one-dimensional like you know it's going to go quite quickly into wide areas and uh, if, if United can add a other string to the bow and be able to build up through midfield, and if Ugarte help helps that, I mean, obviously he's not the second coming of Andrea Pirlo or anything like that. He's um, he's he's going to be the most more... overrated player of all time, Pirlo. <laughs> yeah, but or, or Michael Carrick or whatever. He's not that kind of player. Um, but uh, if he's able to give it simply and mm-hmm. and get Manu involved, I think uh, I think we'll be better for it. So, what did you make of uh, Amaz? I mean, I thought he was good. He's very direct. I like. I like. He got. They got the ball to him quickly. I do. I do think it helps that Matrawi's on that side as well. Um, I haven't seen the pass maps, but I, uh, I would imagine that there's quite a good connection between the two of them there. And uh, he cuts inside. He plays those wall passes. He's looking for. He's kind of what Sancho should have been, but isn't. Um, I, Did you see? I see. I read on Twitter last evening. Sancho's got an assist. And I see what it is. Yeah. And it's actually, it's not a bad pass, quite a good pass into the box, but the guy's got his back to goal with fair defenders behind him. There's a, there's a lot of work to do yeah, yeah. to call that an assist. I mean, good luck, guys, if that's what you that's what you want from Sancho. But Assists should be weighted. Because, uh, uh, like, yeah. Um, it, it, someone got an assist for John Duran's goal for Aston Villa, I presume. Uh, like, you know, three yard pass and bang one in from thirty yards or whatever. Uh, yes, um, but anyway, it, Ahmad should be is what Sancho should have been. I, he's not fully formed. I don't know whether a title winning Manchester United side would include this guy in there. I'd like him to score more goals. He's going to have to if he's one of United's three forwards. Mm-hmm. Um, he doesn't look like he's getting in, into positions to score a lot of goals, but then again, neither do many United players. Part of our problem, isn't it? I mean, I think yeah. What what we have a we have a lot of players who are good enough to be one of the le- least good players in the title winning team. Now, if you put some of these guys in a really proper team, they'd be fine. The question is whether we have enough of the ones that are good enough to really make it happen, and. Where that remains to be seen, but I I'm enjoying Ahmed actually. I must say, like I really I think he's brave. I think he wants the ball. I think he's not scared of doing things with the ball. He's more he, he's little, but he's not soft. Um, he's quicker than he looks, and I think I think there's quite a lot to work with because what he gives us is it, it gives a bit more control. That yeah, he looks to, he looks to keep the ball. He doesn't just look to play a Hollywood pass or just to give it away. He looks to get on the ball, looks to give it, looks to follow it, so that he's in a position to then still be involved in the game. And I feels like he is now United's right winger. 
I mean, apart from Harry Maguire. <laughs> yeah, oh dear, uh, <laughs> Tory boy. He yes, I mean he is. He's in possession. Uh, Anthony came on very late. I mean, you know, Anthony will give us nothing. Two goals and one assist last season. I think uh, maybe it was eight and six or something the season before, which isn't horrendous. Mm. But um, yeah, he's he's the man in possession. I'd, I'd like more goals from him. Hopefully it'll come, but his all-round play is, is very good. So Yeah, I mean, this, this is the thing, and it's come back to that Zerzi thing as well. Like, another, like, see people comparing him, say, to um, Firmino. The difference, obviously, is that Firmino had two players on either side of him who could be relied upon to score the number of goals that you need to challenge for the title. And we don't, we, so we don't, we don't really have that. So if Zerzi scores, like, eight league goals or some shit, yeah. Someone else is going to have to is going to have to get involved, and I mean Bruno hasn't scored yet this season, has he? No, I don't think so. Um, but but there's but you can what you can see that there's there's plenty to work with. The problem has always been with Tenar. Well, one of the problems that better players is an answer, and it's a pretty good one given the donkeys that he got stuck with to begin with. But it can't be the only answer, and it felt like what we saw yesterday is much closer to the way that they're going to have to play. A, to win games, but also for him to stay in the job mm. than, than what we saw against Liverpool and against Brighton in the second yeah. half. They didn't do a lot of pressing yesterday and uh, it looked more like Ten Hag of the first season, first season of Ten Hag. And I, I do wonder whether they just thought, you know, they're thinking about uh, reducing the chaos in order to get some results because I'm sure he's smart enough, right, Ten Hag. He must know he's got no credit in the bank. Like he, he says he talks about the trophies, but that's not what he's going to get judged on. And losing heavily to Liverpool and a series of fairly difficult games coming up, he's he's got to know that United get to December and we've lost ten games that he's going to be in a real real trouble. And um, so I just did wonder whether they uh, went back to sort of the old plan A for a little bit of this game. I mean, I um, thought the plan- second half was not so much like that because it's not so much defined by the pressing as what you're trying to do in possession. Yeah, yeah, had, um, had a lot of possession, obviously, that second half, yeah. And pressing is a tactic, it's sort of, no one's pressing, even the teams that press really hard aren't pressing as high and as hard as they used to. And one of the things I think Liverpool did against us was they didn't press Onana so much because I feel like they think maybe that he's quite good on the ball, but it's more that, that as soon as the ball went to the sort of the first receiver, that was when Liverpool stepped on. And that sort of gave them an opportunity to win it a little bit, a little bit lower down, but still high enough to be dangerous. And it felt like United were doing a little bit more of that. And they actually, I think, um, I think they sort of moved Bruno a little bit further forward after a while to kind of try and box Southampton in. And they got, they got a bit better at doing that after the first, after the first half an hour or so. But. I mean, all in all, it was, it were even, they were still got that. If the penalty goes in, then what? Yeah, sure. Yeah. But, but it didn't. And, uh, and, and we, we've been much better. Uh, we were much better yesterday yeah. and it looked, it looked like we were a team that could get good. And presumably Ugarte will play the next game. I mean, he'll play a bit against Barnsley on, on Tuesday night. Surely. I mean, he just, he needs the minutes. I mean, he had, uh, 60 or 70 minutes and then 90 minutes for Uruguay in the international break. Uh, 15 yesterday for United, so he's he's getting there. Um, obviously, he played Copa America, but then had a month off. So, also Garnacho, yeah, um, his goal actually reminded me of a goal that Skull scored. I can't. Um, someone will probably know which one I'm talking about. I feel like it might have been at home to Sunderland, but I couldn't be sure. But um, generally, like bleaching your hair, right? That's something you do once, like you do it for a bit of a laugh, and then. But he's 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 done it again. Yeah, it does. It, it, are we now saying this is this is what he's doing? Apparently, yeah. N- not a big fan of the bleached hair. I wouldn't do it myself. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I did as many stupid things with my hair as I possibly could when I was. I mean, I'd be younger than him. But I also, I mean, meanwhile, Eric Ten Hag was wearing beige trousers and a black coat, which was an extremely strange look and. I mean, mainly when I see someone wearing trousers like that, I'm thinking, you've got to be very careful. You've got to shake very well. We had a teacher at school, Mr. Pickernell. Wayne, his name was. Wayne Pickernell. And a politics A-level teacher. And uh, he was a supply teacher because our teacher went on maternity leave. And, I mean, 
you can only imagine what went what what, 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 what was the things that were said to this poor individual. But there was one occasion where he comes back after lunch and he's wearing trousers of that colour and he has not been careful in his shaking. And oh, this is no. announced to him. This is announced to him in front of the class oh, that no. he should he should perhaps take more care of future. So I always well, I always think away. Why is when I see when that'd I see be embarrassing if Ten Hag had come out with a bit of a pee stain? That would have been, yeah, not good. Uh, yeah, it, but, um, all the memes. He gave quite a funny answer as well, and he got asked about why he wasn't playing Casemiro, and he explains it, and then she basically asks him the same question again, and he says, "As I explained very well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I gave you an excellent answer as to why I've done this." <laughs> no, fuck off, yeah. Uh, but it is strange he brought Ericsson in. I guess I guess he felt he just had to leave Casemiro out. I, I guess so. Yeah, it was such a disaster. Uh, the uh, Casemiro played a beautiful ball inside the fullback and the and the central defender for Dallo for the third goal to cut back. I mean, it was love beautiful construction. He'd been on like two minutes, and uh, and that's where we want you know that's that's what he should now be. And that's why Ugarte be. can play every game, basically, yeah. pretty much every game that matters. And Casemiro is someone that you bring on or you play instead of Maynou so when you, when yeah. you want to rest him because he won't give you the same, but. He'll give you. He gives you something in both boxes and, and, and around. And he's just so much better when he's fresher, Casemiro. I mean, just so much better. He can't play two games a week, I don't think, uh, anymore. But yeah, so he had the whole of the international break off, uh, and uh, well, you know, he he played five minutes of this game. Uh, will he play against Barnsley? I'm mean, seems pointless. Actually, it seems. That. I mean, if you if you've kept Collier and not sent him out on loan, and you don't play him in this game, yeah. then yeah, what's really the point in that? I, I mean, I would probably play Collier and Garte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what's Mount doing? Where's he? Mount's not fit yet. I don't think so. Uh, it's uh, there were just a rat, uh, since we're talking about injuries. Uh, Delict hobbled off. He said to the TV afterwards that it was cramp. So yeah, so he's fine. He, and Martinez also came off, and it looked like they were going to take him off. Then he said no, and then they did take him off. Anyway, hope like touch wood that is not. An it, injury. it doesn't feel like that. There wasn't a lot of um, internet flapping. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like these things will be massive problems. Um, but I also, I mean, Masraoui is also looking a very useful addition. He. He's just he's, he's, he lacks a little bit athletically, but he's a proper footballer. He's, he like wants to take the ball. He's not scared, yeah. and he's got a really good brain. You can see he's like lots like, about him. Be interesting when Shaw's back. What happens with that uh, right back spot? Who uh, who gets it? Dallo, who's I think he's doing all right. I mean, uh, he has developed uh, into an all round player. He doesn't make a lot of cock ups. I mean, he did get absolutely skinned by what's his name? I forget the right sided forward for the young kid. Dibbling. But dibbling, that's it. Yeah, he got completely skinned um, by him early in the game. And, and then like, claimed he got the ball for the penalty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. I completely forgot about that. Yes, he was absolutely miles away from the ball. <laughs> my, wife's, my wife's in the room next door working, and I've just received three messages telling me I'm too loud. And I'm thinking, we've been together since 2008. It's a bit late for that. <laughs> Oh dear! Yeah, lovely getting a text message from your wife saying, "Be quieter." You are too loud. I mean, we 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 know this, and yeah, it's yeah, it's congenital. You're a podcaster, so. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. I mean, great, um, good performance from United, isn't it? Nice not to talk about, as you would say, a bunch of dickheads for once. <laughs> I mean, I, instead, yeah, I, I haven't quite absolved them of, no, of, no, of, no. of, of that yet. I, but, I mean, because uh, we well, I mean, we well know that they can return to dickheadish. Yeah, I'm not absolving myself, so yeah. I'm definitely not absolving them. Um, but but who, uh, who would you bring in against Barnsley then? What, what does the kind of team look that. like? Okay, so my team is I'm going Onana. I guess, or might as well actually might as well play Bay and Deer. I guess. I mean, he's had oh, one game in every year. Yeah, Newport wasn't there. What's the yeah. else? What's the point? Um, I guess Maguire. Um, definitely not playing Martinez, but I don't really want to play Maguire and Delict together very much. We haven't had. We uh, I mean, I guess Delict will get a rest. Uh, we Maguire and Evans. Maguire and Evans. We haven't got any younger defenders, have we? Since Cambuala went. No, so yeah, Maguire and Evans, and then who? Who? 
what fullbacks do we even have? I mean, not from the ones that are playing, basically. Yeah, I, I don't really want to say either of them. I'm no. not saying either of them. I'm saying whoever happens to be knocking about, probably. I don't think we've got any options. Yeah. Um, then in midfield, I'm going Collier, Gugarte, and and I don't know. So definitely not saying Bruno. Who else have we got? Who else have we got who could legitimately play midfield? It isn't Bruno or Mainu. I guess maybe I am saying Casemiro. And I'm playing those three. Casemiro and Collier. Casemiro, Collier, Ugarte. That's yeah. my three. And then the front three, I'm going... I'm thinking about then Zerg Z because he probably still needs games and could you do with another goal. So, yeah, I would probably go Rashford, Zerg Z. Garnacho. And hasn't, Garnacho. Hasn't started a game this season. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit too strong for Barnsley at home in the Carling Cup, Carabao Cup. But, isn't but it? Who, which which children do we have that we would play in this game? Really, that are ready? No, it's Collier's the closest. Yeah, yeah, that, and there aren't there aren't really any there isn't really anyone else. So uh, yeah, I, I think I mean it would be it feels like I mean unless you just play more more full strength team play and say you play Bruno and Manu for a half and take them off. I mean Bruno uh, never gets a rest, but surely he needs one. Oh, I just want them at home. I don't. It's not because it's not just a physical. I wonder thing. whether Harry Amos might play. I mean, he's fit. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I forgot about him. I'd say yeah. in. Yeah, he'll do. Um, uh, Toby Colley, Dan Gore, did he go out on loan? Can't remember. Now. I mean, I, I guess you we, might play. Ever, you could play Ericsson again if you don't want to disgrace Casemiro by making him by making him play in this game. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd happy to play Re- Harry Amos for that. Remember when Paul Scholes refused to play in a Carlin Cup game? I was there. Yeah, that was that was a really strange week. That was that because we got we got beaten Anfield on the Sunday, then we go and lose four 0 at Arsenal on the on the Monday, and it's just days that week's only two days old. I've seen you know, I can see seven times. Yeah, awesome stuff. Because <laughs> I think what happened was so they because they draw Arsenal, and what happens is I think this feels like there might be an agreement that they'll play second string teams and it's in that sort of period where United don't really have any strength and depth so it's like your Alex Notmans and your Jimmy Davises like I can't even remember what the team was that day and Arsenal play um Canu and Wiltord and obviously they take the piss I think it was 4-0 I think does Wiltord score a hatchet can you score a hatchet yeah, someone does remember, yeah but yeah um someone does um but yeah, like that. I remember that that Liverpool game that was the day before was miserable as well. The cop, the cops singing. There's only one yap stamp as uh, we managed. Like we, we we go two nil down and then Beckham scores and then we just top. Was it two, and then we just toss in another one just almost immediately. And I guess that was maybe the day where you thought, oh, well, are we gonna? I mean, it's early in the season. It's November. You're like, oh, are we not gonna win the league this season because it had been so long since that had happened. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this is this is strange. Uh, well, we, I, I wonder whether we'll have a go at the Carling Cup again this year. Um, I mean, sure, he will definitely be taking that seriously. Yeah, I mean, he's got to. I mean, he's put so much store in in cups, hasn't he? Tri- cup triumphs, cup triumphs. Yeah, cup titles. I think he called it as well. I mean, won two titles. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. <laughs> I was just thinking: uh, is Ethan Wheatley still at the club, or did he go out on loan? Because he may be involved as well, maybe not starting, but yeah, I think I think I think he's there. But yeah, it's just that cross between trying to keep some momentum, like make sure you win, make sure it doesn't get dicey dicey at the end, and and you end up with your best players having to flog themselves through a game with maybe some extra time. Which I mean, we've seen bullshit like this before. Does it does it go to extra time? I think it. I think they might. Actually, no, I think they killed no, the doesn't. extra time now. Yeah, yeah, no extra time till the semis. So at least, at least the way, <laughs> at least they won't like the way you feel at home. Um, <laughs> no extra. I thought there'd be no extra time yet. So then it's just penalties, which means you do sort of have to win it in ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that game under Van Gaal, where it was in that dreadful week where they draw nil nil with City, and then they draw nil nil with Borough, and they lose on penalties. And I was, I was in Jamaica for work and. I'd had driven from um, a driver who'd taken me from Montego Bay to Kingston. And you know that if you leave at a certain hour, you'll get back in whatever it was. But if you wait, 
then you'll get back in many, many, many hours later because that's when the traffic is. And I, there's a place called Scotchies, like that's your best jerk place. So we're in Scotchies and the game's on. And I was just like, said to the driver, I'm so sorry, but I'm ill. <laughs> and unfortunately, we have to stay here and watch this game. <laughs> so we stay in Scotchies and we watch United draw nil nil with Barra, then lose on penalties. And it takes like 19 hours to get back to Mobay. And yeah. That was sort of around the time where I was like, yeah, yeah, this is definitely not happening with his ma- with his manager. Can he, and he obviously then lasts the whole another year after that. My best part of the season, like the whole season, I mean, after that. It's worked out well having Dutch managers for United. Uh, all right, Barnsley in the Cup, then Palace in the League. Then we get into the world's longest competition, which is the Europa League. So uh, 20 at home should be an easy start. And then we've got Spurs. I mean, it's kind of... I think it's some like seven games in the next twenty-two days. It's a lot. It's a lot of games anyway. Spurs are actually the sort of team that we have the players to really smash up if we can be sensible. But yeah. Spurs, Spurs who build up beautifully and then have got absolutely nothing up front. But, but, but also a, a very high line. And yeah, yeah, that is exactly what United what United want. I mean, and Basuma's injured as well, isn't he? I mean, maybe he won't still be injured then, but them not having him makes quite a big difference. I think if. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, three three games that United uh, would like to win before that, I think. So, and Ten Hag would definitely like it. Keep the pressure off. I mean, the one they really need to win is that Palace game. Yeah. And yeah. It would be embarrassing if they were to get knocked out of the League Cup, bit bit Barnsley, but it just seems on it. I remember the last time we played Barnsley when people were stealing pies, and um, someone ran and someone ran on the pitch and scored past Ben Foster. Um, it was when would that bit oh nine ten I yeah think it was. I mean, it was more than a decade ago yeah no yeah what was what that the yep. Barnsley almost went up last year I think they I forget who the manager is honestly I mean I should have done the research. Danny Wilson Danny Wilson so yeah <laughs> they can't still can't with Danny be, Wilson can't Danny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's definitely, it's definitely not Danny Wilson <laughs> but let's find out who it is um, I mean, the truth is it'll be something you haven't heard of. Is it not just does Paul Heckingbottom just not go around these teams managing all of them at the same time? He does. The manager is called I don't know if his name is Daryl Clark or Darrell Clark because he spells Daryl D A R R E W L. Wow, Daryl Clark. Don't recognize him at all. So it actually says that he's head coach, so maybe he's not a manager. But yeah, and he had a career where he played for Mansfield Town, Hartlepool United, followed Boulogne spells at Stockport, Port Vale, and Rochdale before then joining Salisbury City. Top stuff! What a career! What a career! Well, awesome. I I don't know whether this one's sold out. The I I think it's one of those ones where because Barnsley get a cut, so they were not willing to drop the prices. So. I think everyone's playing full whack and Barnsley fans are playing quite a bit, paying like 40 quid to, to go to this one. I presume they'll have a good following just because it's an opportunity for them to come to Old Trafford, which they haven't been to for many moons. So, but what, the year that they were in the Premier League, as I recall... It's just the one year, right? I th- yeah, did they win at Anfield? I think I think they beat Liverpool either way. I'm not sure if they won at Anfield, but I'm pretty sure they beat, they beat Liverpool. Um, but, yeah, I mean... It would be kind of amusing, I guess, if we managed to not win that game, but we will probably win that game. I think we will. I think that's about it for the week. There's, I think we've got a chance. Yeah, we've got a chance. Yeah, mighty Ten Hag and his mighty team uh, will do something in this one. All right, we'll leave it there. We'll be back in midweek for uh, another one of these to review the Barnsley game and uh, our mighty victory uh, in the now seeded Carling Cup. Carabao Cup, whatever it's called. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. You can catch us on the socials. Uh, Daniel Harris, I'm at NQAT Pod. We're on Threads, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Blue Sky. And you can catch these on YouTube, too. Uh, and if you really like us, you can get our bonus shows, including Tactic Show, which will be tomorrow on Patreon. Many thanks. Catch you later. Please.